Hi everybody. Um, today's video is going to be uh, about giving you more ideas. Let's call this part two of ways to make these little art books um, that you can put your artwork in. I primarily work in watercolor and this is a travel journal. This is yard birds. Um, but we're going to talk a little bit about the things that you can use for covers, um, the variety of ideas that I have come up with, and I'd like to share those with you. And ultimately, what you need for um, supplies for almost any of the books that I make is you're basically always going to start with this art board or a real heavy cardboard that's rather inflexible. That will be for your covers. And in almost all cases, as I said, I will be covering it with something, whether it is uh, a fabric like this, I mean, excuse me, a paper like this or fabric or whatever. And you would be using, again, the basically the same uh, process for those by, let's say you're using paper, you would coat this with glue and I use a brush and Elmer's glue is fine for this, it works great and then just kind of brush it on to make sure it's even and getting out to the edges and so on. And then you would put, in this case, paper over that. This is scrapbook paper that I get at uh, craft stores like Michael's or Hobby Lobby. You would put that over this cover or over this cardboard. And I use a, <clears throat> a big uh, scrap of dowel rod and I just kind of keep doing this back and forth to get it really smooth and flat and the, have the coverage be really good. Um, okay, so then after that, after covering this cardboard with either, you know, fabric or paper or whatever, then you would be, in all cases, uh, doing the same thing by having, you're going to need some holes in this. And the products that I use for punching these holes in the cardboard, it's this, I got this on uh, Amazon. They're, it's a hollow punch set. This is a six piece one. I think I only paid $7 for this. Uh, and it's real sharp and you just use a hammer and this is just the pad you do it on and you would be punching through the paper. So that's another thing that basically all of my books have in common. And then for the uh, paper, for the pages of it, I just use a hole punch like this. And then this is the last component in basically all the books I do, and that would be these ring binders to hold this together. After you've put it all together through the holes, different sizes of these. And next I wanna say that uh, before I go any further, um, all of the links for these products are listed below. You'll, you'll see everything that you would need to put this together. Just to very quickly, uh, review in the part one of these uh, covers for suggestions, I talked about using fabric, which would be like this, fabric for a cover. And I talked about using like a scrapbook paper or actually any other kind of paper uh, for a cover. And I also talked about using um, maps like this. I found this map and uh, we talked about doing that. And then also, I have also discussed using coasters as covers for these art books. And now we're gonna go on and talk about a whole bunch of other ways um, that you can come up with to, to, uh, to do these covers. And also, just quickly, I wanted to show you some other types of scrapbook paper that they have. I showed you this one, and these usually come in 12-inch uh, sheets of all kinds of different papers. I call it scrapbook paper, they may call it something else but I believe that's the way you can find it. You can see that I've used it on here, and you can see that I've used it on here. Yes, this comes as, a, as an actual paper with the writing that looks like you're actually reading a book or something. Um, and then on these, what I've done is I just go in and choose a font that I like, and if it isn't obvious from the book that I have made what is in that book, you know, like readily pulling it off the shelf and knowing what's in that book, then I just go in on my computer and print up Oh, just, you know, the name of the book, the way I have it on the YouTube list of videos, and then just glue it on um, to the cover afterward. But these are just uh, both paper. And also these are paper done in the same way, fruits and veg. This is gonna be fruits and veg, that's the name of it. I print that up, glue that on there. Here's more of the scrapbook, Random Musing. 
And this is another one of scrapbook. This is all one piece. It doesn't look like it, but this came, and I thought it was great for a travel journal, which is what this was. And um, this was kind of cool because there was no writing in here. It was just like it was open, an open uh, steno book or something. And I thought, well, that's great because I can put what's in this book on the cover and not have any questions. And uh, so anyway, that's some more of the scrapbook paper that I have found. Another idea for book covers is um, to take uh, wrapping paper, or I guess I would call them wrapping bags. This one is really nice. It's very slick. It's nice and sturdy, but that's another thing that you could look at to use would be, look at these uh, gift bags at the store. This was one that somebody else gave me a gift in and I just saved it, but cutting this apart would be a great cover. Um, the wrapping paper, I have tried it on a few things, and unless it's a little bit stronger, you know, just regular gift wrapping paper, it kind of can buckle and it can be so thin, you can hardly get the glue on it and have it in one piece and get it onto your cardboard. But it, it is something you could consider if you had a little bit thicker wrapping paper. Um, another idea that I use for covers is uh, greeting cards. These are some really cute little cards that people sent to me. They have birds on it. I'm, that's a massive um, hobby of mine is bird watching, and I do a lot of birds in my watercolor. But you could cut these off and make this for your cover. Cute. Um, greeting cards, they come in, oh, so many different varieties, you know, sports or kids things or, you know, so many ways. Just look at greeting cards. Consider that as a cover uh, for your books. Here's a couple of other ideas for your art books. This was con like a contact paper, you know, the peel off the back and stick it on that I found at the dollar store. I, I just got a sheet of it because I thought, well, I'll try that. And it worked really well. It's very strong stick on that. And so that's another option that you could use. And once again, I, I printed out on my printer, you know, the name of what this bird, this book was, Birdtober. And before I forget, I want to tell you that down below, you will see, down below this video, you will see links to um, any product that I use for my um, watercolor books. And then also you will see a list of my YouTube videos where all of these are done separately. All of these that I'm showing, they've been done separately. And you will see page by pages if you're interested in doing, you know, any of these. But anyway, that's another idea is like this contact paper. And then this was a pre-purchase, well, not pre, but it was purchased. It was a purchase book just in the watercolor section of probably Hobby Lobby. And I use this for, this is my 2018 travel journal. Um, this was up in Alaska in Northern Canada. And um, anyway, it came just with the black cover. And so another idea with this is to, to take some other paper, like this is scrapbook paper. And I thought it was really cool. And I put it over the cover to make it just be something fancier than just the black. And then on this one, I put the label 2018 Travel Journal. Another thing that you can use for covers on your art books is to go like to the dollar store or a thrift store or whatever. And if you see a book like this, this really cute little mother goose book, I know I didn't spend more than a dollar on it, or like Frosty the Snowman. Let's say you want to do a collection of watercolor or pencils or something, drawings of uh, winter or snow things. Take these books, just get a book like this and Cut it apart, use this. That way you're not also buying the artboard or cardboard like I do for the other ones. It's already ready. Um, but you could use that as a cover, these cute little books. And I did that in this case. This was a journal from the South Pacific when we went there, and 2019 South Pacific Journal. But I thought this was really cute. This is a little cardboard book that I, I found at Dollar Store. And it's called Pirate Pete's Sea Adventures. And it's really funny because this was a cruise of ours. And I thought, well, that'd make a great cover. So I just tore that apart, front, back, inside. The inside had a lot of really cute little drawings too. And used that for my cover. Another thing is we've already talked about using scrapbook paper. And um, I just wanted to show you these because these are 
using little scraps of the scrapbook paper. These are really tiny. Now on this one, this is just, I drew the entire alphabet in capital letters and watercolored them, but this is a tiny little scrap of that, of um, off of a sheet that I used for something else. I always do the, this is always going to be um, paper for me on the insides also. I mean, it's going to be covered, not just raw cardboard. So you see where I use these little scraps up for these tiny books. These three, same thing, it's scraps. And I don't have anything in these yet. I just made them because well, at some point I'll figure out what I'm going to do with them. But again, the cardboard in and out, back and front, and the little ring binder to hold it together, but little tiny scraps, just so you're not throwing that type of thing away. Another one, this one will probably use it for travel or something. I, um, on this one, I did not glue it onto cardboard. I just um, left the, the sheet separate. It was fine, it's fine for that, and then you get right into the book. And then on this one, I just, uh, also put some tape on it, just this uh, like duct tape, because I thought it kind of looked cool that way. Again, haven't used that one. And then on this one also, I did not glue this on cardboard. This is the cover, and I just left it that way. This is really tiny, really short. This is just a book I stapled together, and this is the cover. So that's another way you can do them. Um, this one, I have really not yet started in this book, uh, but I'm going to, oh, there's the, there's the back cover and the front cover. I'm calling this book Waiting, and I'm going to be doing a lot of watercolor with just people waiting for something. I saw this kid um, on his phone in a at a ferry station in Washington when I was there, and I um, and saw it. This is all going to be people that are waiting for something, like with their backpacks on or something. And on this one, I did a little differently also. I used scrapbook paper as the backing on this cardboard, and then I did the title this way. I just kind of ripped it and then took this drawing and, uh, you know, ripped it again, like almost like a deckled edge, not quite, but, and then used that for the, the absolute, you know, the, the finished cover on this. Um, so there's another way. Here's another thing you could use. I'm, as I've said, I'm a birder. I do a lot of birding and a lot of watercolor birding and, um, or birding with watercolors. And this deck of cards, I found their backyard birds playing cards. And I thought this could make a cute, well, you wouldn't use those, or the joker. Well, you could use the joker, that'd be fun. There's a couple jokers. Uh, anyway, you could use this for a cover. I could see doing that and flipping, and this is your cover. And you could maybe occasionally throw in some of these just for fun. This last one that I just uh, showed you and a couple of the other ones before that, I would just consider those kind of a, an upgrade from just the paper because you've put the paper on here like I have on a lot of my books, but I kind of leveled it up by going with a drawing and the title of it on here. And here's another one that I did that sort of thing with. I started with scrapbook paper. This backing was just some glaciers. And then, um, because this is for our trip coming up this fall, uh, to Antarctica, I was in Michael's and just looking around, this looked so plain and I thought, well, let me see if I can find something to kind of go over that uh, because it just looked plain with the iceberg and the calving of the iceberg. And I found these 3D, like they're felt and they peel off and they're stickers. And these little fish also came on the same sheet of uh, with the stickers. And since we're going to Antarctica and we will be seeing penguins, that's what I did to kind of upgrade this cover and it just brought it to life. I love it and I can't wait to use it. And on this one, on the inside of it, I also put the rest of them. I didn't want any of these little guys to go to waste. Um, so that's kind of an upgrade from the scrapbook paper is to use something like that. And then um, also, I recently went on Timu, which I've become addicted to, and found um, two sets of paper that I absolutely love. One was this set. I don't know how many there are. Eight of them, I think, in here, and it's on really nice paper. And um, as I've said, I do a lot of birds in my watercolor, and I thought these were spectacular. And I'm going to glue these onto cardboard for covers for my artwork. 
Um, and I just think they're beautiful. I don't want to cut them up or anything. I want to use them this size, but you could cut the pieces that you want. And uh, also on Timu, I bought these just last week. It came, oh, these were so cheap to those birds that I just showed you. It was probably only $2 for all of those. And on this one, I think there's, this was a set of 30 and there are some repeats, but you also see different ones. I loved these designs. And I think, again, I paid maybe $2 for this whole thing of 30 sheets. I wanted to use these as covers, but I thought, oh, how am I going to do that where it's all, you know, kind of like burnt off the edge? So what I thought of was I went down to the craft store and found this paper that I love that goes really nice. It's a soft kind of a heathery turquoise or aqua. And I'm going to um, mount this on the paper. So again, another upgrade from just the paper. I'm going to mount it probably leaving about that much on there all the way around. And then that will be a cover. And I have enough here of this color to do a front and a back cover. And I probably will put um, a bird, you know, on the front and on the back. But I think it really sets this off to use this paper like that. And yet another thing to do for covers on your art books. And that's it for now until I can find some other ideas that um, I have for things. And um, <clears throat> to repeat, the, the list of my uh, YouTube videos is, is below the link, or excuse me, the links for that. Link for that is below this video and also um, some of the products you might need to complete these covers. So go off and have fun. I hope that I've inspired you by giving you some other ideas rather than just the same old stuff and go out and have fun and get creative with it. And until I come up with more of them, that's it for now.